What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be at Consensus 2024, interviewing a multitude of projects and ecosystems across Web3. Certainly today, a man that does not need an introduction, but I'm going to give one anyway. So Ben Jorgensen, CEO of Constellation. Ben, I'm curious from your standpoint, you guys have been at this for quite some time, pulse of the industry. Uh, we've yeah. seen a lot of shifts and evolution and mindset, but you know, you were just a DC blockchain week, everything else. Give us your thoughts on where we're at right now. What are you kind of feeling? What's a little bit different from previous years? Yeah, I think it's it's actually a fun spot to be in. Um, we've heard this like, wow, you guys have been around for a while, which kind of makes you think like, gosh, have we? It's only been like six years, but, but this cycle is so different. People have like gone through struggles. They've gone through ups, downs. Uh, relationships have been made over years. And it feels like a progress with sure-footedness. And all the people that are still around are actively clinging on to each other to bring out so much movement. So I, I feel like the energy is a little different. You know, I remember going to some of these conferences like six years ago and you were like, I am scared to be in this industry. How are people doing what they're doing? And now where there's still some of that, there's a lot of authenticity through relationships that have been made over the years that I think is going to propel the industry forward in so many different ways. We're also seeing so much happen in America with legislation, policy, we have coming together of parties, like that wasn't around, it wasn't around last year. <laughs> so we have this huge opportunity that I see um, a really uh, nice consistent growth for the next come several years. That's awesome. Yeah. And you were recently at DC Blockchain Week. You gave yeah. a keynote. Uh, I think one of the things that we've seen a shift in is certainly legislators starting yeah. to actually get involved within the digital assets asset space at a more, I guess I would say, uh, participatory level. Sure. Can you walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, so um, I gave a keynote uh, a couple of weeks ago at the DC Blockchain Summit. And um, as I, you know, it, it was amongst um, SEC commissioners, uh, congresswomen, congressmen, senators, and really the topic was really just around digital assets. And I thought that was really interesting to highlight um, because they weren't really talking about the technology so much as what is this digital asset and, and how do we regulate it? How do we give people financial sovereignty? Um, but what was fascinating, like I said earlier, was you had both Democrats and Republicans coming together and talking about the need to come together to make policy clear, make regulation clear, give people guidelines and frameworks. Um, we heard from the SEC and they almost apologized for how slow they had been on the Bitcoin ETF. Uh, so I think there's this understanding that this is here to stay and it's not a, a political party divide right now. Uh, so when I, I gave my talk, really what I was talking through was not so much about policy and legislation coming through, but hey, this is impacting us entrepreneurs. It impacts our, our companies. It impacts um, how we perceive innovation, who we invite into our country and who we kick out and scare away. Uh, but the, the key thing is the key takeaway that I wanted people to have is like, there's a lot being done. We're doing a lot with the federal government for the past five years. Um, there's more being done than just digital assets and the technology is here. When you come to this conference, it's insane. People haven't been scared off at all over the years. Like it's, it's stronger than ever. It's more sophisticated than ever. And it's going faster and younger generations are coming out. They want to get involved in the, in the conversation around legislations. We want to offer support, knowledge, share so that we can create a clear future. I think what's interesting too is that, um, you know, kind of your viewpoints on the need for real world use cases and sure. real world business to come on chain or yeah. on the hypergraph. Um, talk about application specific networks and yeah. talk about how that's going to empower businesses actually leveraging the technology in ways that make sense. Yeah, I, I think you're actually, st um, so to begin, uh, application specific networks are our term for like blockchains in a box. So people can come to Constellation Network they can build their own layer one network on top of Constellation, which includes node operators or validator nodes, custom frameworks, uh, bridging off-chain data on-chain, think of oracles, uh, really kind of open the idea to any, any opportunity or application out there. 
AI specifically, where you're taking AI data, you're bringing it on chain, you're validating so you know what goes into uh, an LLM um, or some sort of AI application. Uh, so this real world solution also entails creating customized networks that people can actually build their own value proposition from scratch, not just use, be forced into an insular ecosystem, uh, but actually define their own ecosystem. And that has huge impact on community support, as well as kind of bridging to real world networks. That's huge. And I know you mentioned, you know, at it for six years, working yeah. with Federal for five years. I'm curious from like the milestone standpoint, because a yeah. lot has went down in the Constellation yeah. ecosystem over the past handful of months, and a lot yeah. is coming. Yeah. So it almost seems like there's been kind of this stealth mode that's yeah. been going on with Constellation for a while. So, and there's a lot here, I know, with sure. NDF and the DEX and the bridges. Yeah. When you look at milestones, what really sticks out to you? What are you excited about? How does it tie together yeah. for the future? Yeah, I think um, when we got started, what, what I was excited about was that we would have we would allow developers to have more customization and we would give them more freedom to build their own network. And now this is becoming a more uh, a, a, a really interesting topic around some of the large L2s that are creating really massive communities, taking this, you know, giving this blockchain a, a box concept and now they're going, oh, well, let's go build our own L1. So it's happening more than, it's, it's happening more than like, hey, let's just use a smart contract. So, this evolution is actually going to be companies and ecosystems building their own subnetworks uh, in the ways that we're seeing L2s build massive communities, massive network responses, uh, and start to think about going into being their own layer one and going off of other chains. Uh, so I really like this evolution. It's, it makes it more sophisticated. It brings in more growth, long-term growth, and it really connects a token to a true ecosystem. So when I think about our ma major milestones, it's like, yeah, we were we spent about six years, uh, you know, building. But a lot of that was there was a lot of research that went involved. There was a lot of brand identity being formed in the early years. And then for us, the way that we approach things is we we want to build with a customer in mind. And that was a diff that's a different mentality than most Web three ecosystems take, where it's just like, oh well we're going to have a smart contracting solution. So we're going to go do that. And it's like, well, who are using these end products? And so our focus and really our DNA as a company was to find those companies. And we found the federal government in 20, 2019 that kind of shift their thinking about how blockchain could be used. We spent four years building with them, building inroads with them. Um, and then most recently, I would say one of our major milestones was in November, releasing our first subnetwork or application specific network called a Metagraph uh, on Constellation's chain. And now we're adding features. Now the exciting thing now is that we're in the snowballing moment where it's about adding new features that'll unlock new functionality because we know what all of our customers are and what their capabilities are. Yeah, and I think it's interesting too. I think one of the shifts, you know, looking from the outside in that we're starting to see is the networks that have been here building for a handful of years at this yeah. time, are starting to look at how to grow the pie together across ecosystems. One yeah. of the notable things that came out over the past couple of months with you guys is uh, in introduction into the De uh, Decentralized Recovery Alliance. Yeah. So now you guys have kind of inroads and are working alongside Hedera and Algorand and Ripple and uh, Casper. And right. talk a little bit about that. Is that, that's, that, I, I love we weren't topic. seeing that a few years ago. Yeah, and, and you know, um, being kind of a boutique blockchain uh, and seeing kind of what other chains are doing I always had this vision of like a multi-chain approach. Constellation kind of has a background of wanting to be chain agnostic, block, you know, we all work together. Well, so many ecosystems have been very insular in their approach, both from a technology standpoint, hey, come to our ecosystem, this is the framework, can't really work with outside systems. Um, you know, communities were kind of, uh, would be like, well, we're, we're Hedera, we're this, and. Now what we're starting to see is that we're gonna to need to come together from a community standpoint and a technology standpoint to win more market share. And so DREC was interesting because it's, it's using technology to bring in other protocols and ecosystems around similar philosophies, but it's also creating this kind of bespoke uh, alliance. Well, it literally is an alliance, but it's creating this alliance of anybody that's not in the top five 
to go, okay, hey, let's come together. Let's bring our communities together. Let's bring our technology together. And let's like, let's go, let's create a bigger noise. And so that, that shift that's happening is gonna be less like, well, you gotta choose this blockchain for this. But like what I'm excited about is actually coming to forces with like Hedera and Ripple and going, hey, developers, use this solution from Ripple, use this from Hedera, use this from Constellation. This is your new, this is your new technology, right? You don't have to be specific to one chain. You can use it for different pieces. You token, tokenize on Ethereum, tokenize on a Solana, you know, validation of data, create your own network on Constellation, financial technology from Ripple. Like we're creating this, it sounds like a Frankenstein, but the net outcome to developers is that they're gonna get massive community support that are merging and overlapping like a Venn diagram. A hundred percent. And I think last but not least for me, you know, there's a lot of different aspects that kind of tie together into kind of your ethos of industry 4.0. Yeah. Uh, where we've been and where you feel like we're going. Can you talk about your vision for industry 4.0 and how that's going to come to fruition? Yeah. So, so um, to take a step back, what is industry 4.0? Industry 4.0 is the convergence of uh, major disruptive technologies, so I would actually, um, it would be AI, AR, VR, blockchain technology, digital assets. But I would, I would also throw in like community evangel evangelization, if that's a word, but communities coming together on, in remote ways, um, in a programmatic ways that are tied to a financial linchpin. So I actually put that together because how we self-organize around technology shows the adoption. So what I so I think that there's an actual different component to industry 4.0 that includes that community mentality. So where I see industry 4.0 going is that all all businesses have the opportunity to use this technology, create digital assets that create another asset on your on your books, um, create an incentive mechanism that's programmatic and creates community or customer adoption or mechanisms for exponential growth. And so this, this approach to working with all these technologies has an opportunity to propel us and businesses forward in a way that we haven't seen before. That's the exponential growth that we're going to see in fascinating ways. I and mean, look, we even just started talking about how legislators are coming together, right? Like this technology is bringing together legislators outside of moral and ethical belief systems and saying, hey, this is here. How do we ride this wave and grow with it? Well, that's going to propel this industry in an exponential fashion. And that, to me, all those elements make up Industry 4.0 that we're really kind of uh, growing towards. Yeah, I think uh, I've mentioned it that we're trying to work on getting the United States Department of the Treasury onto uh, a yeah. podcast or Twitter space. And when I tell that to people, people were like, how did you do that? And I'm like, well, you know, National Digi Foundry yeah, is yeah. just leveraging Constellation's technology sure. and infrastructure. You know, U.S. Department of the Treasury is one of those members alongside NASA and Space Force. So it's really cool to see how all this stuff's tying together. You're starting to see regulators, policymakers. I mean, you guys have been working with government, but now they're testing out public aspects, DAOs, education. Industry 4.0 will certainly be interesting to watch come to fruition. We've yeah. got Ben Jorgensen here with us, CEO of Constellation, as uh, one of the key individuals uh, bringing this together. And thank you so thank much. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time today. Thanks, Solomon.